Bohemia's new title, Armor Reforger, dropped yesterday on Xbox Series X and PC. This game is amazing, and I think Bohemia did quite a good job with it. However, personally, I've been playing a lot of my time in one of the community mods made by the devs, which is the Capture and Hold game mode. And in that game mode's map descriptions, I noticed something that could be the resemblance of some basic lore. And it is that lore which I will be covering in this video today. So with no more real delay, let's just get right into this. So what is the lore that could possibly exist? Well, when you install the contact pack, you will observe that each map has a description of what that map is. And by using that information given to us there, we can map out the Soviet and American positions in the timeline where the pack takes place. So, starting off with the earliest, we have the Battle of Morton. This battle has to be the earliest because it is the initial Soviet landing on the island, where Soviet troops land in from the dock and NATO troops attempt to repulse them. We learn through another battles card, however, that this battle doesn't really go too well for NATO. That battle being the Briars, which states that following the Soviet attack on Morton, a fuel depot has been left undefended. This suggests that the Soviet offensive is continuing to go on in this region even after the battle at Morton. Following this battle at the Briars, though, it seems the Soviets' momentum continues, as they conquer the nearby city of Lamentin and begin a battle at Le Mole. This is what's told at us in the Battle for Le Mole's little card, but it also states that NATO forces are launching a counteroffensive, which is really what is going on at Le Mole. Elsewhere at the front, we know that the Soviet spearhead from Morton also pushes east, a push that would be met by the Americans at Camp Blake and Simon Woods in an attempt to prevent the Soviets from splitting their lines in half. Well, we don't really know, and I don't think we're supposed to know the results of these battles. After all, you know, it is just the control and hold mode. It's not meant to be, you know, definitive. We do know that there is a second Soviet offensive to the far north. This one starts at the Battle of Almara, which occurs right outside St. Philippe, which appears to result in the Soviets being routed temporarily, as they will attempt again at the concrete plant that is further to the north, seemingly trying to encircle the NATO forces at St. Philippe. Finally, we have our last front, which is in the far south of the map. We are told through the details that Montfort Castle is the last defense force of the U.S. garrison located in the south, who have already suffered two defeats down in the south, losing the city of St. Pierre, and with the Soviets blockading Pennet's Pass, pretty much forcing a battle between the U.S. and Soviet forces in this archaic stronghold. These battles are interesting in themselves, and while they might not tell us much about the general lore or the concrete situation, it is interesting to chart it all out and wonder if this is the actual procession of battles on this island, as intended by the lore. But it definitely seems to work for the timeline that the specific mode takes place in. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and if you guys are looking for anyone to play the new Arma with, VSO is trying to gather some players together to you know play it. Both me and Boba own the game, and we've both been loving it. Whether you want to play the original mode or this modded version, I'm sure you'll be able to find somebody. But until next time, guys, this has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all next time. Thank you.